I know I've said it many times, but I have to say it again. Adding a property using Entity Framework is incredibly easy. First, we need to go to the model and add the property that we want. And in this case, it's going to be a property with a decimal type in which we will call price. Then we will click on the Tools tab and Package Manager Console. Then we'll add another migration using Add Migration and a title of our choice. And I chose Add Price as a title. And then we need to use the Update Database command. And that's it. Let's check on the database if the column was created. Right click on the database file and choose Open Containing Folder. And we can open our database using DB Browser. And we can see that now our table has a price with a default value of 0, 0.0. After this, we need to change the user interface to cater for the new property. First, when we insert a product, we need to get the price input from the user. Using the same NZ console.ask as we did before, but this time it will be of the decimal type. And this time in the insert product method, we need to create a new object, a new product object. And instead of passing just the name into the add product in the controller, we will pass the entire object. Obviously, we need to change the signature in the controller so that it accepts product instead of a string. Then in the show product table method, we need to add another column to the table object. And that column will have as a header, obviously the price. And we also need to pass the price argument to the add row method. And we can't forget that it needs to be a string since the add row method only gets strings as parameters. And let's make it a little bit more readable by creating new lines for each property. And then we can test the app. Let's add a new product. I get asked the name and the price. And when I visualize it, I can see that the new product has the price. Now we need to change the update product method. And this one will be slightly more complicated. We're going to use ternary expressions to determine the product name and the product price. So first, I'm going to add a binary prompt from spectre.console and for that I need to use the confirm method. What this does is it provides a yes or no option to the user and it returns a boolean. So that's the condition for the ternary expression. If the boolean is true, the element after the question mark will be assigned to the product name. So we are saying that if the boolean is true, the product will be assigned to the new name, which will be asked using the ask method. If the boolean isn't true, the product name will be assigned to the product name, which means that it's keeping its current value. So let's recap, because it can be a little bit confusing, especially if this is your first time using ternaries. I'm assigning a new value to the product name, and this value will be dependent on the boolean that's returned from the nzconsole.confirm. If it is true, the value after the question mark will be assigned to the product name. And that is the new name grabbed from the ask method. If the boolean isn't true, the product name will be the current value of the product name. And then we'll do the exact same thing for the price. So let's test to see if the update functionality works. If I choose a product, I get asked if I want to update a name. If I choose Y, I'll get prompted to input the new name. And if I choose N, I won't get a prompt to update the price. Now notice that there is a Y in between parentheses in green. And that means that if you just press enter, the Y 
will be the default option. So essentially the boolean is going to return true if you just press enter. Let's try again just to confirm. So I'm going to update the Pablo Coffee again. This time I won't update the name. And I'll say yes to the price. And I update it to 5.5. And the 5.5 value is recorded. So that's it. This is the end of this intro series to Anti Framework. And this is just the beginning. Very soon I'm going to release the second part of this series, which has more complex functionalities. We're going to add categories of products and the ability for the user to add orders as well. Right now we can only do CRUD operations with the products, but since this is a point of sale, we need to support sales of those products. And for that, we will need to learn about one to many and many to many relationships. And we will also learn how to generate reports about these sales. Don't forget to check our website where we have a complete roadmap for C Sharp developers from simple console applications to full stack development with JavaScript frameworks, Blazor, MVC, Razor Pages, and cloud development with Azure. We review all projects that you submit to us on our dashboard. We have a huge leaderboard, which at the moment has 700 users from 75 different countries and the content is free and will always be free. Thank you for the feedback. I'm going to release a video with all the chapters in one single video and this one without music for you guys that don't like music in the background. And please keep giving me suggestions and feedback. I make these videos for you guys, so I'll always listen to what you have to say. If you like this video, please subscribe. It's very helpful and I'll see you in the next course. And I'll see you in the second part.